Yeah, I've actually heard that if a task takes less than two minutes, do it immediately. That's a great little hack. Yeah, those are the things that pile up the most, I think. Welcome to Unfiltered Creativity. I'm Shri. I'm Monima. And we are both on a journey to live a more creative life. We are excited and grateful to have you all along this ride. This is an open space to have dialogues about productivity, mindfulness, art, music, personal growth, entrepreneurship, and many, many more. So in today's episode, we are going to talk about productivity, the challenges, and how to live the best productive life. And also giving some productivity hacks. I mean, Sriniti is giving us a lot of hacks, I'm sure. <laughs> you know what? I try to be as productive as possible. So mm. I'll go into my repertoire and see what I can dig up. So before we jump into productivity hacks and how we can be more productive, how is productivity defined in a, in a stereotypical sense of the word? Yeah, so I think the stereotypical definition of productivity is... Uh, producing something in the most efficient way uh mm -hmm. that's fine but the word productivity is much more than that i agree i think mm. there's almost a, a capitalist sense in how we tend to define productivity it's all about yeah how much we're producing how mm. much money we're making yeah what important things have we checked off our list i think we are also prone to how we attribute self-worth to productivity i mean uh, we consider ourselves to be um, productive or we had a productive day when we check off everything on our to-do list and that's classic me otherwise yeah. I'm so hard on myself if I, I think I, yeah I yeah. think we all do that to some degree and, and it's the flip too right if I don't check off stuff on my list it's sometimes very easy to diminish my own self-worth and feel bad like yeah. I didn't accomplish anything and I'm not worthy. And, yeah. um, and that's why it's important, I think, to really figure out how we can be productive in a way that's also healthy to our mental health and our being. Mm. Um, and I think the first step of that, you know, is to kind of disintegrate that definition of productivity that we have and identify what is the actual goal like what do you want to accomplish with your day or with your life so earlier when I was setting my goals for every day when I wake up and do that first thing in the morning um, it was always um, pertaining to some school work or a recording or a work that is making money but there were never things like hmm maybe I should take a walk today or Maybe I should uh, get an ice cream or maybe I should do uh, some skin exfoliation today. I agree. I think one of the challenges in living a productive lifestyle and trying to be productive all the time um, is that, you know, it's very easy to get caught up in the, the, the to-dos that mm. have to do with work or school or your yeah. extracurriculars and finding that balance yeah. that itself is an art mm. and to actually honor and love yourself for giving that time for self-care is super important so I think it's great that you've added that into your yeah. to-do list and your schedule so for me personally the biggest challenge I face is to not be at composure or not have that calmness when it comes to really long day and that is actually counterproductive <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean absolutely yeah and also another biggest challenge I do face is to end up not doing the things I want to do and be hard on myself at the end of the day. Yeah, that like, is also detrimental to my mental health. Yeah, I think that's definitely a challenge that I share with you. I mm. mean, you know, setting the to-do list is sometimes the easiest part and working your way through it and finishing everything. Yeah. Um, it sometimes doesn't work out within the time that you have in the day. So that is definitely a challenge. And I think the idea of being overwhelmed, uh, for me, it's sometimes even bigger than what I have to do in that day or in that week. It's like, if I have this daunting task and I keep repeating to myself, like, for example, I have to put out a podcast with eight episodes in four weeks that thought itself can be very overwhelming for me. 
Um, and I think like some of the things we're going to go through today are, are the hacks that I use and I think people can use to kind of combat some of that mm. feeling, right? And I think one of the things we talked about earlier was that whole idea of um, feeling like your self-worth is tied to your productivity. And you said it again when you said that yeah. if you don't finish your list, you feel bad about yourself. Very bad. Yeah. And like, I think that is a cycle that we need to change for our own mental health, right? We don't, like our life isn't tied to these things that we have to do. Yeah. But now I'm at a stage where I'm like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. I, I have tomorrow. But that doesn't mean I slack off every day. <laughs> But I'm just not getting hard on myself these days. If, if I don't feel like uh, doing it and if I feel like staying in the bed or watching a Netflix show, I'm like, yes, I will. Uh, I'll take a break for an hour. But I make sure that I get back on track and do it. So it's like the key is to take small breaks if you're feeling exhausted mentally. Yeah. And I, and I think that's a really great place to start with kind of the hacks is that... Um, you know, the first thing, of course, set the objectives, understand what the goal is and include things like self-care and Netflix into the goals. If you feel like you're yeah. getting overwhelmed with the full list of things, like let that be something you check off and feel good about at the end of the night. Um, and I think you're right. The other thing is allow yourself the freedom and the forgiveness to take breaks and mm. to, you know, not accomplish what you said you were going to accomplish Mm. and i think just starting off your productive journey with that place of self-love is the perfect place to start because now you're in a mindset where you actually can be your most productive self yeah you actually care about yourself your health your mind and everything you're being mindful about it and not abusing your mind or being in that toxic circle of the stereotypical productivity it's not a secret but this is something we all have to do consciously is what I feel. So these days I'm practicing to not snooze my alarm. You know, as soon as the alarm goes off, I wake up, I get out of the bed and I make my bed immediately, brush my teeth and have a cup of tea or coffee in the morning, depending on the mood I have. So that way it just gives me good energy to to pursue my day and go on with the day. Otherwise, I think I just feel lazy if I keep snoozing my alarm. I'm, I'm just in the bed for the next two hours too. And I know that I'll feel very bad about it. I'll feel guilty about it by the end of the day or afternoon. So I'm, I'm an yeah. alarm snoozer, so I'm pretty impressed that you're able <laughs> to not snooze your alarm. But question for you, Manima, when mm. you start your day, do you kind of make a to-do list of things that you would like to accomplish that day? I usually do my to-do list the night before the day starting so I do not have to get up and think about what I have to do and you know that way I already have uh, the tasks delegating to myself for the next day so that's what I do what about you I I like to yeah sometimes I do it before I go to bed sometimes I do it first thing in the morning Mm -hmm. Um, and then I also sometimes plan quite in advance so if I know I have something to do next weekend I will break it up into little tasks okay And that's one hack I definitely like to do. So if I have especially larger tasks to prevent myself from getting overwhelmed by these larger tasks, I'll break them into small, easily chewable little deliverables, and then I'll split it up into different days of the week. And you might have noticed, even as we were working on this podcast together, I would send you an invite for Tuesday saying review script one. And it's just a small thing and it's something easy for me to accomplish. And eventually I'm working towards the same larger goal. So I do like to break things up and it really helps me a lot. So that's a hack that I would use for sure. This makes a lot of sense to break down your complex task into small, simple ones and chew bit by bit and feel accomplished yeah yeah and and (laughs) thank you and it really helps right to just check something off a list even if it's something really silly and small yeah it feels like you know what I'm doing okay I'm getting through my day and especially for people like you and me who Mm. do tie our self-worth to our productivity yeah these kinds of things really help and I would also say you know in that theme you were talking about in terms of waking up making the bed getting a coffee Mm. If there was one suggestion I could also add or one thing that I like to do is to not let the little things pile up, Mm. which can be really overwhelming for me. So like little things as in, 
And, you know, my husband will laugh if he hears this, but like <laughs> laundry or, you know, if I was drinking a cup of water, what I used to do actually is when I would drink a cup of water, I would just put the glass down wherever okay. I was. And at the end of the week, it became like this task where I would be going to different areas of my house and collecting glasses that I would be drinking water from. And it's those little things that just pile up and become work. Mm. It takes exactly the amount of effort to put my glass on the table I'm standing in as to just put it in the sink, right? So it's like not letting those little things pile up mm. as I go about my day. So things are always clean mm. and I don't have to worry about adding more work. Yeah, I've actually heard that if a task takes less than two minutes, do it immediately. That's a great little hack. Yeah, those are the things that pile up the most, I think. I think even before, you know, waking up and setting a list and doing all of that stuff, sleep is a pretty important thing that we should talk about. Oh my God, yes. I'm really working on my sleep hygiene, mm. but I do try to sleep at least seven to eight hours a day, regardless of what I have going on, because I function better as a human being. But what do you do to sleep better? Do you have any ideas for me? Sleep hygiene is a term uh, I learned during pandemic. I, I didn't know that this term existed until then. Pandemic kind of screwed my sleep cycle for a bit because I was too much on social media and too much on Netflix before sleeping. Be around electronics and screens for a lot of time, for an awful lot of time till two or three in the morning, which was bad. It, it was detrimental to me and my health and my eyes and everything. So then I decided to actually start taking small steps. You cannot make a drastic change at a time. You you can't say, okay, yesterday I slept at 2. From tomorrow, I'm going to sleep at 10. What I've done is I started putting away my electronics in the first step. I'm like, okay, it's 10 o'clock now. It's time to, you know, switch off all my electronics, uh, maybe D&D mode, and then start reading a book. I think one thing you said, Manima, that I really liked was that you can't change something overnight yes. and even in you know some of these tips and hacks we're sharing things that have worked for us mm -hmm. um, if you're trying to employ them you know you should never try to do everything at once think of like we said earlier if you have a big goal you know I like the idea of taking small small goals and I like the idea of maybe just starting with putting away my cell phone so I think that's something yeah I can employ for sure the window I give is one hour uh, before I sleep so in that one hour I like to maybe read a book or uh, light some candles or let my Alexa or Google uh, play some nice music for me or these days I'm also listening to the sleep meditation podcasts which are really soothing and helpful and it really calms me down because that's the only way that's the only time during my day or night where I can meditate I don't usually meditate. Mm -hmm. It's very challenging for me to sit in a place and meditate. So sleep meditation is somewhat helping me in a way. So. The thing um, the thing about meditation is I recently started meditating a few years ago after I did a bit of a workshop that we can talk about in a different episode. Mm. And it seems counterproductive, but when I do take that time to meditate, I'm actually a lot more productive with my other hours. So what you're saying is so important to take that time to be quiet and mindful mm. actually helps in setting those intentions for the rest of the day. Like it helps me be more mindful about what is actually important to me and what those intentions are. And I'm seeing now more and more, you know, influencers and people who I look up to as real estate agents or really successful people have added this meditation component into their day mm. and they're probably the most busiest people we know. Yeah. So I think it is really important, like you said, you know, allow yourself that hour mm. to just be quiet with yourself. And I love the idea of using a sleep app and things like that if you're still new to meditation. Sriniti, I have a question for you. So you do a lot of things in your day. I know you have like a bank job going on you have your entrepreneurship or your business via streets art going on so how do you manage when there's a lot of things going on one of the things that really help me um, is to group repetitive tasks together so i do have a lot going on and they are in quite different you know there are many different topics many different realms so for example exactly what we're doing today right one of the things on my to-do list for august was to record 
a podcast. Mm -hmm. But what we decided to do is instead of recording a podcast every week, we've grouped those tasks together. And while everything is set up, we're recording multiple podcasts together. So by grouping these repetitive tasks, when you're already in a certain zone, it really helps you get those tasks done and be productive. It's kind of like, would you do laundry every day or would you just do it once a week? Because when you're in the mindset of laundry, it's easier to do three loads than to remember to add this new task every day because now your mind is switching from topic to topic mm -hmm. and that does take up energy. Mm -hmm. When you're switching from one mindset to another mindset to another mindset, that's a lot of energy and the most you can minimize that extra energy spent, the more you can use that energy to actually just get stuff done. So that's one really big thing I do for sure. Wow. I think the other recommendation I would have is to create systems for mm -hmm. repetitive tasks. So. For example, if there's something that I have to do every week or every day, and I know that there's somebody around me who might have the bandwidth to help me with those tasks, I would actually create, you know, here's A, B, C, and D, what needs to be done, and where I can delegate that to other people. Mm -hmm. So for example, in my business, the shipping thing was taking up a lot of extra time, not because it was difficult, just because it was an extra thing on my plate, and I would have to leave the house and drive and do it but I know that my husband is on the road a lot. So what I did was I created a very simple system where whenever I have deliveries, I leave them at the exact same spot by the door. Okay. I put the addresses on the package on a piece of paper, and then I send him a WhatsApp on what goes where. Okay. And that becomes a really easy system where without too much thinking on any of our parts, this happens very seamlessly and all of the packages get delivered. So thinking of what tasks that you have that you might be able to offload is a great thing. And the other thing is like, we should never feel like we are not rich enough to ask for help or hire help even, yeah. right? Like when we go to a restaurant, hmm. we're paying somebody to cook a meal and serve it to us. Yes. Nobody has to be rich to do that. So it's almost like deciding what your time is worth and what you want to spend your time doing, where you might add the most value and then kind of delegating the rest and creating those systems so that you don't have to think about everything that you're doing. Mm. And it makes it a little bit more routine. Mm. And again, it just takes that energy out of it. Mm. So like by, yeah, basically the goal is to break your tasks down into small pieces and then take the energy out of switching between tasks or rethinking the process for tasks you're doing often and then grouping like tasks together like that's like my trifecta of wow. how to be the most productive as possible oh my god Manima, i know when we were talking a few months ago you had actually created a system for yourself that mm. worked really well mm. yeah i did <laughs> during summer i i had a lot of free time going on with me uh, during the day especially and i had a lot of things to do as well but there was no proper system or no proper routine. So what I decided was the library in our university got opened in the summer. So we had to like book appointments to go there. So I used to book appointment for the whole week on, on the Sunday uh, from Monday to Friday or Monday to Thursday. Given myself the 11 to 5 schedule, even though it wasn't paying me or anything <laughs> switch off my mobile or put it on dnd and start working maybe networking because i had to look for a lot of um, uh, internships during that time and i also had to do a lot of much better work much better which is my own startup i have um so there was a lot going on so i used to like um give myself okay two hours i'm gonna work on this task and after that, I used to take a break, you know, go get a Gatorade or a Red Bull and again come back to the library. And another two hours, I delegated it to some other task or some other activity. So, yeah, I think it was good. I made sure that I wasn't exhausting myself that much because I've given myself frequent breaks in between. Uh, use my phone in between as a reward. It was like <laughs> an incentive for being productive continuously for an hour or hour and a half. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's interesting that you say that, right? Because that routine really does help us. Mm. I think humans in general are creatures of routine. I yeah. think whether we admit it or not, a part of us does like that. I remember even when we started working from home in our in my full time job at the bank, mm. um, what really helped me get into that routine was a bit of an adjustment for me, a very difficult one, actually. But what helped me get into that lifestyle and, you know, 
the ability to sit at home, like you said, and stare at a screen and work by myself for eight hours was actually to kick off that morning routine. So, so just like I was going to work, I would wake up, I would take a shower, I would, you know, put on a nice shirt and just getting out of my pajamas and my sweatpants and whatever I was doing the first couple of months just changes your mindset a little bit. So I think you've mentioned a few things, you know, the morning routine, the scheduling routine, those things definitely help. That's probably the most important takeaway. If I could pick one from everything we've said so far today, it would be, you know, the mindset is the most important to give yourself the freedom, allow yourself Mm. that self-love and to do what you need to do to create a positive mindset for yourself, whether it's routine or, you know, anything else. Yeah. I have a question for you, actually, Monima. Mm. It's uh, off script a little bit, but I'm curious on your opinion on this. Of course. So there's a lot of very affluent, famous people that we know, okay. um, including the CEO, ex-CEO of Apple, who used to wear the exact same outfit every single day, okay. right? Steve Jobs Steve used Jobs. to wear the same outfit every single day. Mm. And there's a lot of people who do that, and it's a productivity hack, Okay. to not have to decide what to wear, to take that extra decision out of your day. What are your thoughts on that? You know, now that we're talking about clothing and getting ready. Mm. Okay, I do agree. It, because he's the CEO of Apple, it definitely worked for him. Mm-hmm. But as a girl or as a woman, I would want to dress every day differently for sure. But maybe bring in some routine or uh, a standardized thing somewhere else in some other aspect of my life. But if you're particularly asking me about uh, wearing the same outfit every day, uh, no, I like to add some color and add some variety into my dressing. But I do have this one. I have a routine makeup though. Okay. Yes, I, I have a consistent standard routine uh, when it comes to makeup because as you said, I've practiced it uh, for many days and it takes less time right now uh, to get ready with the same number of products I use. So Yeah, I agree. I, I have to agree with you. Personally, for me, and I think a lot of people, my dress sense and how I show up to the world is kind of also how I show up for myself. Mm. So it is important for me to in some way express my individuality Mm. in how I look, right? Um, But I do agree that there is something called decision fatigue, which can really, really impact productivity. And I think especially if you think of like, you know, moms and people who are constantly making decisions for other people or themselves, you know, what to eat on that day, what to cook, what groceries to get, what school should I send my son to, what dog food should I pick up for my dog, like each one of these little things become a new decision. And I think what Steve Jobs did and what a lot of other people do about Mm. dressing the same is to kind of alleviate that decision fatigue. But I think it's a it's a good it's a good idea, actually, for me to assess the things in my life and say where can I take out that decision making capabilities right like I love how you've done it with makeup Makeup. and I think we can all maybe take a minute to assess and say okay what is something that I do every day that Mm. takes time Mm. and I have to think about it that maybe I don't have to do maybe it's like optimizing a grocery list or setting up a meal plan where every Monday you cook the same thing so that you don't have to keep thinking about oh what do I cook today what do I cook today and your grocery list becomes standardized and you know things become easy standardizing it and removing the decision fatigue out leaves up so much room for us to focus on the things that we actually need to do yeah so maybe that can be a good takeaway for today for everyone listening is to um, you know make a list of what your actual priorities and goals are allow yourself to include things like self-care and self-love into your priorities and goals. Think about the tasks that seem overwhelming and whether we can break them up into smaller tasks. Think about routines that might make sense for you and your family so that you don't, you know, you get yourself in the right mindset to be productive. So whether it's waking up at a certain time, eating at a certain time, what routines make the most sense. The final thing is to identify which tasks in your day can you standardize and remove that decision fatigue Fatigue. out of. Like what are the things that you're making decisions about on a constant basis that are tiring you out? And sometimes I think 
we don't even realize that we're doing this. We don't realize how exhausting it is to make decisions all the time. So Srinidhi has a lot of productivity techniques, more productivity techniques. So if you want to know what they are, please let us know. We would love to do a future podcast on it. And the best place to reach out to both of us is on our Instagram. So you can reach Monima at... It's Maunima. And you can reach me at Shree's Arts on Instagram. Yeah, make sure you follow Unfiltered Creativity on all the streaming platforms or whatever streaming platform you use. We are on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts and also on YouTube. So thank you so much for joining us and we cannot wait to have you join us again next week at Unfiltered Creativity. See you then. Bye.